Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Learn to Program series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to continue on part 3 of my regular expression part of this tutorial, in which we will cover back references, look ahead, look behind, negative look ahead, and negative look behind, along with a whole bunch of other different things. If you haven't seen part 1 of the regular expression tutorial and part 2 as well, I provide a link here to that, and as well in the description, you'll find a link to the entire playlist. You should watch all these videos in order because otherwise you may be confused. Also in the description is a link to all of the code as well as a transcript of this video and I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay so here is our cheat sheet. It's gotten a little bit bigger and this is every single thing you've learned about regular expressions so far. In the first two parts of this tutorial we learned here that we can search for our regular expression in this string using search to get either true or false back. We also learned we can use find all to get all of the regular expression matches in this string and we can also use length to find out the total number of matches. We can use compile to get ourselves a pattern object that's going to come with a whole bunch of methods such as substitution and with substitution we can substitute whatever regular expression matches we have here inside of this string and then substitute whatever we have here at those matches. And here are all the individual specific codes. I'm not going to go through them all. Like I said, in the description you can get this and we can learn some more. All right, so we're done with our review. Now let's start learning about back references. Okay, now a back reference is going to allow us to reuse the expression that precedes it. And I'm going to start off here with a silly example to show exactly how they work. And then I will create a more complex example to demonstrate how they are more commonly used in the real world. So what I want to do is I want to match for cat here. And specifically what I am trying to do is I'm trying to match for a match that has the exact same match before it. And in this situation, that's going to be cat. I'm going to demonstrate it so you will completely understand it. All right, so what am I going to do here first? I'm going to create my regular expression, call compile on this. I'm going to use a raw string here. And specifically what I'm looking to do is match a word boundary and then one or more characters followed by a space. And if it is then followed by the same exact match, I want to return it and how I'm going to return that is by surrounding it with parentheses and we surround what are called submatches with parentheses to receive them as you saw in the last part of the tutorial. So here we go. What I want to get here is a word boundary and then I want to get either letters or numbers and specifically I want to match for one or more of those letters or numbers. I then am looking for a space and I want to match for one or more of what precedes that which is going to be the space and then you're going to put in a backslash and a one and this is the back reference. This is a reference to this guy right here and this is the back reference. So what I am basically looking for is a match like this which is going to match for every single one of these guys. But specifically what I want to match for is a situation in which what is here is exactly the same as what is here. And we only get that match whenever we have cat cat. I'm going to show two examples here and a whole bunch of examples as this tutorial continues. Believe me, by the end of this you will completely understand how back references work. All right, so then we got to get our total matches and we're going to do that with find all, pass in the regular expression and then random string. We can also print out the total number of matches that we received just by length and matches. And then we can print out all of our results. And if we do that, you can see we found one match and that is going to be for cat. Okay, so there is a simple example. Now what I'm going to do is show you a more of a real world example in which we use a back reference to provide or to cause a substitution. Okay, so let's say that we had a link like this, just a simple old link. And I'm going to put single quotes in here so that doesn't mess that up. Then inside of it, we went and threw a bold tag, and then we just have the link is the name of that link, and then we close off the link itself. All right, so what we want to do in this situation is we want to match for any situation in which we have these bold tags, like you can see right there. But what I want to do is use a sub-expression to grab the link out of there 
and then delete the bold tags and just put the link back inside of there. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, I just need to match the bold tags. So I'm gonna do bold like that. And then what I wanna grab out is going to be anything and that's gonna be zero or more. And I wanna make this lazy, so I'm gonna put a question mark in there so I get the least number of results. And then I'm gonna put my closing bold tag. Okay, so what I'm grabbing out of here is this guy and what I'm replacing is this whole entire thing. Now how I can do this is, let's go random string is going to be equal to re sub I'm gonna throw in my regular expression inside of here, and then I can reference my back reference, right like that, and that just means the first reference. That's what that whole point is. We'll get into using multiple back references here in a second. And then I can do random string. And then quite simply, I can just print out random string inside of there and run it. And you can see that we went in here and we replaced the bold tags and just left the link inside of there. So that's one specific example of how you would use back reference a lot. They are very, very useful whenever it comes to working with substitutions. And let's go and get rid of all this stuff because it's not really going to matter. And now I'll show you even another example of how we can use back references specifically for substitutions. Let's say that we received a telephone number. So 41212. All right, so this is the number we received. And what we want to do is match the phone number using multiple sub expressions. And then what we want to do for our output is have this come out as 412555-1212 exactly like that. So this is what we're taking in and this is what we want to have as our final output. So how are we going to use back references to do that? Well, we'll come down into our regular expression area and we're going to specifically come in here and we're going to look for digits and we're going to look for a specific number of them being three. And you can see here we're getting a sub expression and then we're going to get another batch of these guys. So we're going to have another set of digits and in this situation once again we're going to get three we're going to stay inside of that sub expression because we don't want to get out and there's your d and then there's going to be four digits for that guy all right so now just to come in here and do our substitution is going to be very easy we'll just leave this as reg x like that and then inside of here we will put inside of parentheses the first sub expression that we matched. And then after that, we'll follow with the second sub expression, this guy right here that starts right here and goes through the whole way to the end of that. And if we run it, you can see exactly we went in there and grabbed and changed everything exactly the way we wanted. So you can see just how simple it is to use back references to do things that are rather complicated. It would, I mean, this is pretty much one or two lines of code. If you tried to do this using other string operators, it could really be a hassle. So that's just another example of why regular expressions are extremely powerful. And now it is time for your very first problem. What I want you to do is I want you to receive a string that's gonna look something like this, or exactly like this actually, youtube.com. And then you're also going to be able to work with non-secure connections here, google.com. And then what I want you to do is grab the URL and provide this following output, exactly as you can see right there. So you're gonna jump in, you're gonna grab this individual URL. You're automatically going to generate a link and throw it inside of there as the reference. And then you're also going to put in whatever the URL is inside of there, all on separate lines. So pause your video and try that out. And of course, we're going to be using back reference substitutions to do so and see what you get. Okay, so hopefully you got that right. And if you didn't, don't worry about it. We're just here learning and learning is a whole lot to do with making mistakes. So what are we trying to do here? Well, we are specifically going to want to get the whole entire link here. So I'm going to create a sub expression inside of here and I'm gonna type in HTTP and then an S. However, we don't know if that S is always gonna be there. So we put a question mark inside of there, pretty rational, colon, two forward slashes. And then we also want to get another sub expression because we wanna get this guy right here also all by itself. So in that situation, we're going to put backslash W as well as a period because there's periods inside of our URL. We then get, want to get one or more for that match specifically. 
and we want to close off our sub expression. Now down inside of this guy, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. We're going to come in and we're going to go ah reference is going to be equal to, and then inside of here we'll get our first match, which is going to be the entire URL. See, the sub expression starts here and ends here, and then the second one starts there and ends there. So that's going to handle that for us. Then we're going to close that off. And then we want to get the second sub expression. So we just put a backslash and a two. And then we want to close off our link altogether. And then we could throw a new line in there if we want to do that. And if we run it, you're going to see that it comes back and gives us our exact results exactly the way that we wanted them. There is the entire link. Here is the shortened URL. And there is the entire URL. So pretty cool stuff. Hopefully you guys got that right. And once again, if you didn't, don't worry about it. So now let's jump in and take a look at look ahead. Now a look ahead is going to define a pattern to match, but not return. And the way you would define this expression is quite simply just put a parenthesis question mark is equal to and whatever your expression is. So let me just show you an example here and it'll make a lot more sense. So let's say that we have one, two, three, and four. And what I want to do is grab all the letters and numbers of one or more in length separated by a word boundary, but don't include those word boundaries. So let's just come in here and that just means I don't, I want to get these specific results, but I do not want the spaces inside of there. How do I do that? Well, I'm looking for letters or numbers. Specifically, I'm looking for one or more. And I want to specifically look for word boundaries, but I do not want them returned. So I just come in here and put a question mark is equal to and a word boundary, right like that. And we can come in here and we're not doing substitutions, so we can get rid of that altogether. And if we run it, you're going to see it comes back as one, two, three, and four. And you can also see here that we did not get those extra spaces at the end that we didn't want. And you could also do the same here as added homework, go in there and make this work with commas and spaces and so forth and so on. So that is what we call a look ahead. Now let's take a look at a look behind. Now the look behind is going to look for what is before the text to return, but it, once again, isn't going to return whatever it's looking for. And the way you define these guys is with a question mark, and then you're going to put like an arrow inside of there, which sort of looks like look behind. Okay, so something easy to remember. So in this situation, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have like a grocery list. So we'll say bread, and we'll say apples, and we'll say lettuce. So what we're going to look behind for is this guy right here. So how are we going to demonstrate that? Well, we need to find a number and a period and a space, but we don't want those returned. So we're going to put a question mark and then we're going to do our little look behind little thing here. And then we're looking for a number and then we're looking for a period or one individual character. Really doesn't matter. You can try it either way. And that's the end of that part. And then the part that we do want are going to be all of the characters. And we expect one or more of those guys to be returned. Pretty simple. Let's run it. And you can see we went in there. We located these individual pieces. But we only got the results that we were looking for. So pretty cool stuff. You can also do a look ahead and a look behind all at the same time. So let's say we wanted to come in here and let's have an H1 tag and say something like um, important and then close that off. And then let's throw in another H1 tag. So am I, and then let's close that guy off. Now we're going to come in here and grab and what we're specifically looking to grab is these two lines of text and we want to throw away these opening and closing tags. How do we do that? Well, we can come in and do a look behind and specifically what we're looking for is H1 tags. And then we'll have one or more of what we're looking for, but we want this to be lazy. We don't want to go and grab the H1 from there and the closing H1 to there. So we have to put the lazy inside of there. And then we're going to do a look ahead right after that is equal to, and we can throw in those H1 tags right there. And if we run it, boop, so I'm important, so am I. Okay, so pretty cool stuff. So now that we tried those guys out, let's take a look at negative look ahead and negative look behind. OK, 
Okay, so with negative look ahead and negative look behind, what we're going to do here is look for text that doesn't match our pattern. And the way these work, this is basically how they are structured. You're going to have a question mark and an exclamation point followed by expression. And that is going to be for the negative look ahead. And then likewise, you're going to have pretty much the same exact thing for the look behind, except you're going to change this into your little arrow point to the left with an exclamation point. And here this is going to be look behind. So let me just show you an example how this would be useful. Let's say you had a list, somebody had a grocery list and said something like eight apples is equal to three dollars and one bread is going to be one dollar and then one cereal is going to be four dollars. Let's say you wanted to come in here and completely ignore this and just find out how many individual items were going to be purchased. Well, how you could do that, and I'll just do the negative look behind in this situation, is you would just put in your parentheses and question mark, and then you're gonna put exclamation point, and then specifically what you do not want to target, and then this is gonna be followed by whatever digits are there. And then we could do a find all on that. We could print out the total number of matches. And let's say we want to add all these up. Well, the list by default is going to be set as strings. So we're going to convert these into integers. And so we'll just go for uh, in matches to convert all those into integers and then save it back to matches. And then let's use a reduce here to sum all these. So we're going to have to come in and get our reduce function so we'll be able to use that and then we could do something like print and total items with format and then we could go reduce and we'll use a lambda here and get x and y and add each individual element if you didn't see the part on reduce well, you can go check out that part of the tutorial and then of course we're gonna throw matches inside of here. And if we run that, you're gonna see the 10 comes back and the reason why it's 10 is eight plus one plus one is equal to 10. So there you go guys, that is a rundown of how we can use back references, look ahead, look behind, negative look ahead, negative look behind, and a whole bunch of other different things. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.